Well, good morning, everyone, uh, wherever you are. As president of the European Music Council, it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you, all our online viewers, uh, Commissioner Maria Gabriel, Sabine Verheyen, Helga Trippel, Mohamed Javad, and Darius Dalek to participate in this European Forum. These are extraordinary and challenging times for us all. So we are particularly honored to be able to meet together today to discuss how the music sector can be more eco-friendly and how music can contribute to the protection of our environment. Originally, we had planned to have this distinguished panel discussion in the frame of the European Music Council's European Forum on Music that was scheduled to take place in Bonn in the frame of the Beethoven 250 years celebration, the Beethoven Fest. The forum was and still is dedicated to the topic of climate action, music as a driver for change. And instead of a two day conference, the EMC board decided to offer a variety of different sessions online. Today sees the start of that online series and the date could not be more appropriate as the 5th of June is World Environment Day. And additionally, within the Beethoven anniversary year, today is Pastoral Day. We celebrate Beethoven's Sixth Symphony, which I have certainly played many, many times, with which Beethoven so clearly expressed his love for nature and for the countryside. We are delighted that this panel discussion is part of the Pastoral Day celebrations. As with any event, we would like to thank our supporters, the European Union and its Creative Europe programme, the German Federal Government, Commissioner for Culture and Media, and our own home city of Bonn. For this panel, we would also like to thank the Beethoven 2020 anniversary year, and for the EFM series online, we would like to thank our sponsor, NAM, the Association for the International Music Products Industry, which is headquartered in California, but has a European base in the UK with many European members, and NAM are members of the EMC. I'm sure that you will enjoy an inspiring and insightful debate. A very special thank you to all of our distinguished guests for accepting our invitation to join us today. And now I have pleasure in handing over to Helga, who will moderate this session. Thank you, Helga. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you very much from my side. It's a pleasure to have you all here. We already heard from Ian and thank to, thank, um, to him uh, for his introductory words. It's Environmental Day and we are still in the coronavirus uh, situation. And we have a very special situation with the Paris Agreement, how to overcome the climate change crisis, what is the impact on music on that, and we have the debate on the recovery fund and the upcoming MFF. So our duty is to link reflection and action. And therefore, it's really wonderful to have you all here. We start with the artist. We already heard that Mohammad Javad is an artist and an activist with a Bahrain background. And therefore, I would like to invite you, Mohammed, please take the floor and give us your uh, introduction. Please. Thank you. And thanks to have me. Thanks for having me. And good morning to everybody and happy Environment Day for everybody. And it's good that this uh, day of environment this year is this, uh, Friday. Friday, which is, you know, Greta Thunberg Day for striking, you know, on every Friday. So it's good 
And I'm waiting really from the parliament's member to do more, uh, you know, what, what they did. Please care and, uh, you know, you have to do more action about the climate. I hope that. So my name is Mohammed Jawad. I am a musician here in Bahrain. I, I think you mentioned that I'm still in Helsinki. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm, I'm since, since six months, I'm in my country. And there, oh. is, no, <laughs> there is no comparing, uh, you know, the, the time I spent there in, in Helsinki, and especially in the, 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 the island I spent maybe three months there, which is called Soman Lina. You know, the beautiful uh, the air to breathe and beautiful uh, climate and nice weather. So I came back here for the, for the pollutions again in Bahrain. So I am in Bahrain since six months. And there is no compare about the air we are breathing here in Bahrain and the air which I used to breathe in Somalina, especially the, the island I love there. Uh, I'm talking to you from Bahrain and from the village where, where I stay, uh, which called Ma'amir. Ma'amir in Bahrain and unfortunately this small village is surrounded by 130 factories and workshops. Since the uh, oil been discovered here in Bahrain in 1932 uh, and refinery been built at you know our, our neighboring you know we are neighboring the refinery uh, the oils uh, factory so that wasn't only 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 the the factory. There was a lot and many factories being surrounded the the village. Till now, it's come as I said that 130 factory that is surrounded, and Mamir village unfortunately came and uh, one of the uh, most polluted 20 cities in the world according to the uh, WHO, the the World Health Organization. That we are one of the most 20 city. Uh, polluted, most poly polluted in the, the in the world, but unfortunately here that's the government. They are do no, no, nothing doing. I used to do a lot of festival, especially this day uh, five of, uh, of June, which is environment environment uh, day. So I used to do a lot of uh, you know in this day exactly. I used to do the the festival of music and some mm. films and uh, a lot of uh, you know. Uh, functions uh, and bigger program, but since the crackdown in Bahrain, uh, 1911, uh, 1911, uh, sorry, 1911, the security crackdown, they stopped giving us any permission to do any movement here in Bahrain. Even the, the movement we do all, it is safe. But unfortunately, since 10 years, the last festival I made it only in 2010. After that, nothing. And the problem is there that because of my movement and I'm actually moving with my weapon, which is my guitar or my lute or my, my musical instruments only. This is my weapons. But unfortunately, I've been uh, targeted in a lot of things. I've been, you know, uh, traveled by. I mean, the difference between me and all of your speaker that you are lucky you are not under risk. Maybe I'm under risk now because I'm talking about my situation. Uh, so I've been targeted in my, my incomes. So the government has closed the last of my income to us in a small workshop for automobile. It's been closed because they are targeting my movement. And my movement is just I'm, 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 I'm demanding for, for better life, for better, better air quality here in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in Bahrain and especially in the village where I stay. Unfortunately, I've been arrested, I've been, I've been uh, threatened many times, I've been in a, uh, under travel ban, especially when I travel for the, for the, for the uh, climate like COOP uh, uh, programs for UN. Uh, I've been targeted a lot because of my movement and my peace, uh, very peaceful. Uh, the theme you call, uh, the, I mean, the theme you call music, and climate action uh, or uh, music and climate action the, the theme really i love because this is what i'm doing since 15 years and why i'm focusing in 15 the, the 2005 in bahrain here there, there was uh, incidents called ma'amir fumes the leakage of uh, petroleums uh, at that night we had four abortions four women in this small village in the same night and we have more 50 vomiting and we have uh, uh, scratching skins and uh, you know inflammations and all of them heavy impact yeah 
Yeah, and all of them been taken to the accident emergency here in Bahrain. And within half an hour, the minister came and said, there is no communication with the, with the gas leak. And so from that day, exactly, for 2005, I decided that's all my music because I'm musicians that I have to support the, the villagers here with my music. But unfortunately, as I told you, even if we do an, 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 an environmental festival or some protest, at that time before 2011, there was a lot of condition and there was a lot of uh, police, uh, you know, police, I mean, security question. So I was under all, all under risk. But since 10 years, I'm nothing doing, except only when I am allowed to leave the country to, to participate. My last participate, I was in uh, Artists at Risk and thanks for, for Artists at Risk because this is first time, <laughs> this is first time I'm attending, you know, and, and, and the other uh, cover, I mean, the, my expense is covered by the Artists at Risk. Otherwise, b before all of my functions being covered by me, so at that time, at least I have some, you know, I have some incomes, which I don't have now at all. And thanks for, for the artists at risk. Artists at risk there, they gave me three months to stay in Helsinki, as I said, the, the, the islands I love, very beautiful and very nice weather to stay in, uh, the Somalina. So I met a lot. I was in uh, Sibelius, uh, Sibelius uh, Academy, I, and I launched my new instruments, which I realized, it, the, the, which is called the uh, Delmonian Lair. I realized it to the world after a, a, a disappearing of maybe four or 5,000 years back. And it's the first strings, uh, musical strings ever in the, in, in the world. So I launched the second one there and I met some active uh, uh, environmental activists and I attend also and I participate in Friday strike while, uh, you know, Greta Thunberg and I was expecting her mother, I think you told me that she will, she, she will be joining us. But I don't know because I love, you know, a young uh, girl like her. She's doing a lot. I think she's doing better than the government. So my last, uh, you know, my last uh, mission or my last uh, request to the government here in Bahrain that, yes, we are breathing in Ma'amir. We didn't say we cannot breathe, but unfortunately, we breathe a dirty and polluted air. So stop your greeting. Stop your greeting. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mohammed. That was a very clear statement and you are a real activist and a driver for change. That is what we are looking for today and what is the impact of music. We come back to what you said, but now we continue with Darius, the other artist and activist. Please, Darius, take the floor. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to this panel. And um, I'm here in Bonn, Germany, the city of uh, Beethoven. And Beethoven lived in time some French Revolution and was composing music for human rights, like in the Ninth Symphony, and um, was also composing uh, on the beauty of nature, like in the Sixth Symphony, the Pastorale. And 250 years later, uh, we are living in times of the so-called Great Transformation. It is clear that we need a shift from growth-oriented economy, from unhealthy consumerism, and from global and local injustice into a new and alternative ways of living within given planetary boundaries. And um, as a geographer, musician, a cultural manager and activist, I realized that uh, in the process of the great transformation or the socio-ecological transformation, music can operate very strongly as a soft power, as a change maker and as a narrative changer. But uh, in order to be seen as an integral and serious change maker for the great transformation, um, I think that artists and music academies and music institutions and cultural policies uh, need to initiate a paradigm shift in the work that must be more comprehensive and more radical than before. And I think that it requires an in, in-depth study of global transformation academic research and as well practice. Uh, in my um, work, uh, I think the following academic and bottom-up networks are very important uh, to cooperate. Uh, I see them as inspiration uh, sources and cooperation partners. Um, the first network which I do cooperate is the network of plural economics. Uh, these colleagues, these academic research colleagues are studying on degrowth and steady-state approaches. 
They are studying on economics of the common good, like Christian Felber in Austria, and uh, on alternative currencies, creative commons, and uh, feminist economics. This is the first network I do cooperate with. Uh, the second one uh, is uh, a worldwide network of transition towns. We in Bonn have as well a transition town movement here. Uh, uh, another network I do cooperate is uh, the transformational festivals around the world who already give good examples how the cultural and musical life can be a transformation uh, inspiration. Uh, the other movement I do cooperate with is the Fridays for Future movement. And last but not least, I'm very engaged into the network and living labs of new democratic methods of citizen participation, where I do develop uh, new community music tools uh, for citizen assemblies. All these aspects I just mentioned, uh, I did uh, bring together in my latest project, which is called the World Beethoven Project. Uh, you can call it a transdisciplinary artivism for socio-ecological transformation. Um, in this project, I brought the musical side, but as well the sustainable side. On the musical side, we did record uh, 20 melodies of Ludwig van Beethoven on non-European instruments, and then worldwide producers remixed them uh, with electronic music. And uh, to present these remixes and to support sustainable projects, we brought the remixes, the album, uh, with DJ sets to transformational festivals, to zero waste festivals. We gave the album for free uh, on the Creative Commons license. And these were aspects and models of the project, uh, which are clearly uh, supporting five of the United Nations Sustainable uh, Development Goals, the SDGs. Uh, first of all, uh, reducing inequalities, supporting sustainable cities and towns, supporting quality education, gender equality and climate action. And last but not least, I wanted to say that running such a transdisciplinary and more dimensional project, it is more than obvious that it needs an ambitious funding framework. And if the music sector wants to be a strong partner in, in terms of the great transformation, it is necessary to have such uh, strong funding fr frameworks and it would be a, a wrong signal in these times if Creative Europe would be uh, reduced and um, not have the, the enough money to, to be a strong partner. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Darius. That have been a lot of keywords, paradigm shift, degrowth, ecological transformation, social transformation, and a clear demand that to do all this um, we need a proper budget for Creative Europe and all the cultural sectors all over Europe. Now I welcome the Commissioner, uh, Maria Gabriel, Commissioner now for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth. It's a pleasure to see you again, Maria. And now you have the floor. Please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see you, Helga, thank, and ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a real pleasure to participate uh, in this online event. I think that first, the topic chosen today is extremely interesting and timely, and that at least for two reasons. First, because very symbolically, it, this takes place on our World Environment Day, reminding us all that, uh, after all, music much like sustainability is about seeking harmony. Second, uh, because the fact that we are having this meeting online due to the impact of COVID-19 shows that the sector is able to adapt and become more sustainable so that it can continue to, tr to thrive. And indeed, uh, the music industry, like all the cultural and creative sectors, has been hit particularly hard, especially live music, with significant damages. Um, I think that we all conti will continue to, to fight for some very concrete measures uh, to take, but later I will come back to this uh, into details. But today I would like to fo focus my intervention on two parts. Uh, first, what is the support that we as a European Commission, we give to the sector? And second, to raise the importance of having a regular dialogue. So first I would like to start with the support for the sector. Of course, there is Creative Europe. And I would like just to mention two numbers. 
around 50% of the funding goes to music related projects. And since 2014, 127 initiatives received in total over 80 million euros. It's enough? No, we need to continue to, to struggle for, for more. The second example is Erasmus Plus program as well, does its part with, for instance, the co-financing of the SHIFT project that uses art and culture to contribute to a better, more sustainable future, focusing on climate change, on gender equality and the inclusion of minorities. Both instruments have been very helpful, but we need to continue to show that they are flexible and they are ready to be react to be activated when the time is the most necessary one. Second, second thing I would like to insist that now we decided to refocus Music Moves Europe, our framework to support the music sector. The budget is two and a half million euro, but we would like really to see that we are able together with the sector uh, that we can work together in order to have a more sustainable, sustainable process. This action will be complemented by another call in the coming months to implement pilot actions in the field of European music export, also adapted to the emerging post-crisis business environment. And I believe that we, we should use this crisis as an opportunity, as an opportunity to strengthen the resilience of the music sector, to increase its sustainability, ecological awareness, and they think that the music sector can greatly contribute to, this, to these goals. That's why I very much welcome this uh, initiative of the European Music Council to organize this series of online events because we need to take this chance to be more sustainable, not rebuild the industry as it was, but in light of what we want it to become. And the contributions already have seen great examples. Thank you very much, Mr. Zava. Thank you very much, Darius, because you have so much concrete, concrete ideas. Now looking for the future, definitely full support on my side to, to see that the budget for Creative Europe will be really increased, not just to be satisfied with the word slightly. I'm, I, I'm very well know with my position and here you have your best ally, the President of Cultural Committee in the European Parliament. On my side, uh, the support is firm. But what is important is even now to start to think how we can link Creative Europe program with other programs where we can use additional funds. Of course, here as a commissioner for a responsible for Horizon Europe program, for me it will be quite important the new cluster tool on culture with Horizon Europe to see how we'll use our new kick with the European Innovation and Technology Institute on creative and cultural sectors. My, my question here is how we can build together a toolbox of instruments that favor the sector. Because you, we all know our two main priorities as European Commission that will continue to be the Green Deal and Europe fit for the digital age. And especially when we have these dimensions integrated, thanks to the music sector, I think that we can touch much more citizens. And that's why here, something completely new, we even didn't think about before, is how to use the support of music sector in our missions for Horizon. Because we said it, that's something new, mission that will be a portfolio of actions, especially because we need the engagement of citizens and we need that our citizens feel that there is a difference in their daily lives because action was taken at European level. And when we'll see, we have a mission on climate adaptation, we have a mission for the quality of water, the quality of food, for smart cities. Here, the music sector for me can make a great contribution. Last thing, I was commissioner for digital in my previous, previous mandate. We need to implement the copyright directive. It's very important and I hope that the member states will do something. It's just about fairness, it's just about our creators. We would like to see them, to continue to offer them us this extraordinary diversity and rich content we need to be there for them with the new rules. Now, I would like to finish with the second part. 
I believe that if we want to efficiently support the sector, we need to listen to its needs. That is why I welcome first this event today. And I think that there is very good reasons, even on the base of our pre previous projects. Here, I'm thinking about one of the European funding project, Green Europe Experience, that focuses on developing new ways to make music festivals more sustainable and less environmentally impactful. We need really to see what works and what we need to improve. And on our side, I would like to, uh, to organize a Music Moves a Europe Dialogue meeting after immediately after the summer. At the same time, I believe fully in the ability of the sector to come up with solutions. That's why uh, one month ago, precisely on 5th of May, we launched our platform, Creatives Unite, a platform for the sector, by the sector, because my intention it was to offer a common space for cooperation, sharing good practices in the cultural and creative sector. And I'm sure that many of you are familiar already with this platform, as the European Music Council was among the first ones to develop uh, its potential. At the end of the month, 26th of June, I want to organize through the platform as well, a conference with stakeholders to discuss, to discuss your ideas for the future and to see what are now our main priorities, where there is definitely a need to raise them at European level and how to, to, to make their implementation something real. So I would like to, to, to stop here. I would like again to say that COVID-19 outbreak has shaken our way of life. Uh, it has forced us to rethink the way we connect to each other, and that includes music. Uh, yet the changes are undergoing are also an opportunity, an opportunity to implement sometimes difficult but necessary changes towards a more sustainable society. And I fully believe in the potential of the music, the music sector. As I already said it, I started with this word and I'd like to conclude with this one. Uh, with the music sector, we can rise from this pandemic stronger and in harmony with our planet. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Commissioner. That was um, uh, very much about what is good political leadership, about the real impact of music and its glamour, what we need for real change, and uh, dedicated to a higher budget. Of course, we need you as a fighter within the Commission uh, to defend the sector. And uh, what I really appreciate, uh, especially now in the given Corona crisis, that we need the implementation of the Copyright Directive to put authors in a better position. So now we continue with Sabine Verheyen. She is now the chair of the CALT Committee of the European Parliament, another key player in the question for a higher budget and to give the sector of music and the other arts uh, really visibility. Please, Sabine, take the floor. Thank you very much, dear Helga. Um, it could not be a better day to discuss about music and Green Deal than the World Environment Day uh, we are celebrating. The climate change crisis has created in, Euro uh, in European citizens' minds a sense of urgency and 38% uh, of respondents of the Eurobarometer survey published in December 19 said that climate change and environmental protection were the main political challenges at European and national level. Uh, and uh, even at the COVID-19 lockdown, perhaps this visibility was a little bit lower than before. I think we now, thinking about the recovery after the COVID-19 crisis, must take into account again this uh, uh, two-step approach to provide the sector but also to make it greener, to use the change, the restart after the lockdown to, um, to foster and implement new technologies, new ways of thinking, uh, uh, new ways also of environmental uh, protection. The Green Deal presented by the European Commission is the most ambitious European response and creates expectations, but also opportunities to reflect on the environmental impact of the European programs. And uh, with the education and, the, and culture, we have two cornerstones of these environmental issues. Education is necessary to raise awareness, 
to shape responsible citizens and to train the next generation of workers, researchers, engineers, scientists, technicians, artists, who will ensure the economic transition. Culture will also play, and especially music, an important role to accompany the societal challenges, uh, challenges and evolutions. Uh, with music, you can, you can help understand things better, uh, to transport information, to transport opinion, to transport a feeling, and awareness uh, via music is a good chance. And the European Parliament's Committee on Culture and Education, uh, um, Youth and Sport, the draft initiative report from Mrs. Farrar, uh, she's from Renew, from France, uh, launched the reflection on how to green the three European programs, which are under its competences, Erasmus+, Plus, European Solidarity Corps, and uh, the Creative Europe program. The three programs are of utmost importance, uh, as most of their beneficiaries represent the next generation of European citizens and also of European artists and uh, 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 creators as they are, have a strong impact uh, on the societal challenges. Uh, these three programs are of utmost uh, um, importance, not just uh, in the program as such, but also the reflection is ongoing. And this, at this stage of the discussions, it is hard to determine what will be their outcome. But we can already identify what are the constraints we are facing, the principles we have to protect, and the possible concrete measures to implement. As the subject is relatively new and also because of its complex complexity um, to green the programs, indicators do not exist and data is difficult to collect. Uh, that should be the first priority to evaluate the environmental footprint of the three programs. The projects include a multi-level implementation and the question is how to know uh, if we evaluate the programs as a whole, or um, if, we, if we should do it um, uh, to have a footprint of each participant. Um, I think um, we have to, to, to think about what, what will be the best. And the third principle on which we have to be careful touches the cultural and artistic sector because green solutions on the one hand should not be a limitation to the freedom of creation. Having these three uh, ideas, uh, these principles in mind, we can think about concrete solutions. As they are mobility programs, the first reflection uh, to, um, uh, um, to impulse uh, would be the transportation mode. Airplane is inevitable for long distance, remote area or short time projects, but we have also to take advantages of the developed and efficient European railway. 2021, for example, will be the European Year of Rail. The European Commission will launch a dedicated plan that should include a reflection on a more systematic extension uh, of train travels to beneficiaries of the programs. And it has already been launched with the Discover EU successfully. And if I uh, also, I also want to mention there are projects now thought about uh, also from the rail sector to bring art to bring music into the trains, to make them more attractive, to make trains uh, a, a place of, of cultural exchange, so that you can combine um, an environmental friendly travel, uh, also with a cultural exchange with uh, music uh, uh, and cultural activities. Uh, but we also need to be careful how to, uh, the assumption that physical is less green than digital because the environmental impact of digital technologies is substantial and it is growing. And uh, online video and to a lesser extent audio streaming is the biggest single internet polluter. Again, we need a better evidence base uh, of what pollutes and how much it pollutes because making everything digital might also not be the solution. But um, I think uh, it is important really to balance out and take a look what can be done greener, what can be done environmentally, environmentally friendly. <coughs> the role of the national authorities and agencies will uh, be also critical in the evaluation and the selection of the projects in their greening objectives. And many of them already launched reflections and good practices that could be shared at the European level. Uh, participating organization also started at their level to implement concrete measures to reduce carbon footprint. Uh, to reduce waste or to propose alternative transportation 
modes. The European Union has to support to develop, share and communicate these first experiences. For example, in the festival scene, uh, if you make good experience with um, environmental friendly obligations for the participants in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a festival, why not copy it in the next festivals and in other uh, uh, parts? So uh, I think this kind of exchange also on these aspects is quite important. The Creative Europe program, we talked about that already, uh, should mainstream an environmental criteria into its selection procedures, not in a way that affects cultural and artistic freedom, but simply to ensure that basic standards are adhe adhered by the projects receiving EU funding. In the draft greening, any report, uh, uh, it is suggested uh, to use the model of the Erasmus Plus Higher Education Charter as a way to make sure organizations comply with certain environmental standards. So uh, that we uh, bring also a reflection to those who organize events, who organize exchange to reflect on what they are doing. And out of this reflection, you can also send a message in what you are doing to the outside, to the societies to create the change. It could also do far more to showcase example of green practices. In Brussels, for example, Ancien Belgique has done a lot to persuade its audience to take public transport uh, by uh, agreeing with the step to put on night services. There are literally thousands of smart ideas out there and Creative Europe can help to coordinate them and to showcase them and to bring also different actors together. The Creative Europe program program could also be used to give, for example, an award or a prize to outstanding projects and initiatives, again, to showcase best examples uh, to, uh, to bring these ideas forward. Another key message in the draft in it is that uh, to contribute effectively to the Green Deal. Uh, it is not just about greening the cultural and creative sector, but using culture as a tool to reach and engage people. It is also a great source of creativity and innovation also for the, for the technology, for uh, companies and for others uh, to come out with this. We need an interlinkage between the creative sector, also between especially the music sector and uh, uh, the other sectors to come forward with this. It is also essential to be honest, and now I come to one of the core, to the core uh, uh, that being greener cannot be done on the cheap. If we are serious about a change, we have to fund it. If we are serious about to, to push forward uh, also in the creative sector uh, for uh, having a greener approach, we have to have an adequate funding in the programs because uh, at the first we have to support. Um, afterwards, there might be also solutions and uh, ways uh, to, to, to uh, save um, costs and uh, to 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 bring some things uh, some some actions into another way that make it not cheaper but perhaps less expensive. But at the first, we have to support, and so we need for the new start after the COVID nineteen crisis, for the new start after the lockdown, uh, for the new start in a greener environment and in a greener uh, uh, creative sector, we need the money uh, in the program. And we can simply claim that the EU programs will be simpler, more inclusive and greener if you don't actually invest in making that happen. Again, we think much of the money to support the changes in the Creative Europe program can come from other instruments, for example, the structural funds, the new um, uh, uh, future funds uh, uh, after the COVID-19, the recovery plan. But this must be targeted to the creative sector. This must be targeted also to music sector, to, to other creative sec uh, parts uh, in the sector. And even we might get money also out of other funds. The specific programs for the cultural sector that really reach out to the cultural sector must be funded adequately. And what is done now by Commissioner President, is, uh, Commission President uh, von der Leyen is um, for us as cult committee absolutely unacceptable. Uh, to stay under the approach of the Commission, under that was proposed by the, um, uh, the, the, the Commission in 2018, was set out to have these greener programs, to have a better approach, to reach out to culture. And at the moment we have a momentum. 
people now understood in the lockdown how important culture, how important, mu important music, how important this is for our societies and for us being human. And when we don't take the moment now to support this sector, to come back after the COVID-19 crisis in a new, in a stronger way, in an environmental friendly way, we miss a chance because at the moment people know how important the sector is. Perhaps in a year uh, they have forgotten it again because it becomes normal again. It's a side effect that you listen to music. It's there and so they recognize it not as something they have to support and they have to fight for. But now people see that we have to fight to come back, to get back a strong creative sector, to get back a strong music sector. And that's the reason why we have to fight now also to get a strong support through the programs. And I hope that uh, we will get uh, uh, supporters and uh, 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 that we are successful in the end to get it. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much, Sabine. That was a very clear statement and commitment to go for change. Um, of course, you're right, we need the data and uh, we need uh, showcasing and we need exchange of best practices. Um, and of course, we need the budget. Now we come to the chat. We have some questions or statements and now we include it in our debate. Please. Is there? Um, the problem is I can't read them out because I don't see them. Can you do it? Ah, okay, Simone? I'll do that. Sorry. I will yeah, do that please. then from the back office. So yes, sorry. So we have um, taken the comments that you have put in uh, Facebook and I um, have uh, highlighted some. So for example, Mustafa Ahmadi from Iran um, said it's not directed to a specific speaker, but I think because we have Mohammed uh, Jawad from Bahrain, I think it's also important to enlarge in this debate. So he says, I think European countries should help other music communities from Asia, can Asian countries. I think we can even enlarge that uh, to worldwide to improve the culture of their countries because such countries are not worried about environmental issues and are not worried about making a culture of it. However, this problem will hurt all the world. Most of Middle Eastern countries need cultural acts. So it would be interesting, you know, um, maybe to, to also direct it to Commissioner Gabriel, um, how we can embed this uh, cultural aspect also in an environmental way to um, international um, policies at European Union level, um, if, you, if this is embedded um, in, in politics or in, in your political decision making. Yeah, Maria. Okay, Maria, please. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I was very glad to have a common declaration with uh, our High Representative Josep Dorel for the World Day of Cultural Heritage, 21st of May. That was a quite strong signal. So for me, definitely now for the next years, we need to continue. But what I need is to have more concrete actions. We all know what is the power of cultural diplomacy. We have already, during the previous years, some initiatives. Now it's time really to rethink some of them with the new post-COVID-19 context, but especially with these new priorities, new technologies, green, green, green priorities. So for me, uh, that will be another, another work to do, actually, with which my team we would like to strengthen this international chapter of, of culture and we would like to come later in the year with something something more concrete as proposals. I would like to build on what was, was already done, but now it's time to operationalize them. I think that that's one of the main the main thing because we have we have some of some of the some some of these initiatives are very positive. But this time we need to be more concrete. So that's my answer and we are working on with my team. Perhaps, Alga, I can, I can just jump in on this point because I'm also a member of the uh, DEVA committee. Um, we have a very strong approach, uh, meanwhile, uh, understanding that uh, on the one hand education but also cultural exchange 
is a, a very important part of external actions we take as European Union. So also support for cultural initiatives in other countries, in third countries, uh, not being uh, members of the European Union is one of the core points in our external policies. Okay. Thank you, uh, Simone. Can you read out another question, please? Yes, yeah, so I will, if okay, I think it, it's probably nicer if you can also see me, not only the, the voice from the off. So an, another com uh, comment is um, the COVID-19 crisis witnesses the return of single plastic and individual transport. So this is also a question, um, how do we overcome parts of the um, new normal, being not environmental friendly um, and getting away out of uh, the crisis in a green way and also not maybe going back to uh, uh, the old normal that was maybe also not completely environmental friendly. So, um, yeah. yeah. Well, that is <laughs> that a maybe more a certain comment. sort of it's, conflict of goals and yes. on the other hand, the clear commitment really to go for transition society. So, uh, I ask who would like uh, to come in at first? Maybe our, maybe our artists uh, come in because you in everyday life are confronted with that as well. Maybe Darius on the question of transition and conflict of goals and Corona crisis situation. Would you like to start? We need the voice of Darius. Perhaps you remind him to switch on his microphone. Perhaps he has muted his mic. Darius, yeah, now Darius, you should. Now I'm here? Yeah, now you are on the floor. Wonderful. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I just wanted to say that we have this, uh, this feeling of a cognitive dissonance, which is a term which comes from psychology and means that if we have like, uh, goals to achieve the the Paris uh, goals and but don't live them. It's always a it's a, always a problem and uh, we try in our uh, musical sector to to achieve the goals to to um, to have a better transport of musicians from A to B. But uh, for myself, for example, I, I'm um, organizing uh, parties from here and then in, in metro trains to show that it's. Uh, it's a good uh, possibility to to have a transport uh, like this, or we, we are planning to to have uh, concerts and trains around Europe. But if you look uh, how expensive it is to to organize trains for for concerts, it's incredible. So uh, a lot of colleagues take uh, planes, and uh, the sector is. Uh, uh, putting so much uh, um, carbon footprint. Um, and this should, should be changed and funded by, uh, by public uh, uh, institutions. But of course, that is the question I would like to add of research and other ways of having fuels which are um, much uh, less in uh, emissions. So maybe that is a good question for our research commissioner as well, because we have to connect all the needs of um, change in everyday life with the big questions uh, of new transportation and um, carbon-free economy. Maria, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Georga. Uh, two things. Yes, you are completely right. We need to link this with, with our researchers. And uh, that's what we started to do already with my joint research center, is to have a real evidence-based policy. I think that here we need to strengthen, to strengthen this. We started to collect data, and actually we are thinking about the different scenarios and what will be the impact, what are the necessary fundings. We, we would like to continue to work on this and very soon to present some, some results. The second thing that I would like to suggest, maybe it will be good here to use some of other instruments, e-twinning platform. This year, the topic is climate change, and they fully believe that our schools and our teachers can really help us to, ve to, to vehicle some of the messages and to, to make understand our young people how important are these gestures, because 
what we have seen that it's not spontaneous and yes it's in contradiction between our different ambitions but i fully believe that here there is a role of education system of teachers of young people and we need to involve them maybe a little bit more okay thank you very much maybe uh, simone you read out the next question before we are running out of time yes so it's uh, one concrete question and again a more general question so there's a very concrete question from sonia griner from the european choral association are there any news about this creative europe call announced in april two million published um, in may redirecting word for the support scheme of the cross-border dimension of the performing arts work for digital culture and virtual mobility because this fund will reach creative and cultural sectors or needs to reach creative and cultural sectors as soon as possible. So very concretely for you, Commissioner Gabriel. And another comment, a general, uh, general uh, discussion in the chat, um, um, that the data-based economy is not necessarily more environmental friendly. So everything that we do digital also has a, a carbon footprint. So finding a way, a way out of the crisis also needs really shifting um, the perspective or really needs to have the broad perspective that um, while we might think one alternative is better than the other, we probably always have to think twice. So that was one of the comments. So Maria, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Two things. Uh, we are working with my, with my team in order to announce the results as soon as possible. What I can say for the moment is that we receive, we receive, we receive more than one 120 uh, proposals. It's great. There is a huge increase in comparison with, with other calls. So now what I ask my team, it's really to be, um, to be as quick as possible because we all know that the sector needs this funding in order to continue and to implement this project and that will be published very soon. Okay. Juan Quinzabino, would you like to comment? Yes, thank you very much, Helga. Um, I think that is what I said exactly, that we have to think, we, we have to rely on data, we have to, to think about what is the best way. Uh, not always the digital way is the best way to, 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 to make a change, but uh, perhaps also other, other ways of making um, our own action um, responsible and greener. Uh, to, to, to take in everything we do, an eco ecological uh, responsibility. I think that's the way we have to go forward. Uh, to think first uh, how we can do it and how we can do it better, but uh, also uh, not, not always the digital form is the uh, environmental friendliest form and not all the things can be replaced by, by digital uh, interaction. Um, uh, we see it now when we, when we are working in the parliament. I'm, uh, I love to work online remotely but it doesn't uh, replace a personal contact. Um, and I think especially when it comes to culture and music and other things, the personal contact is important for creativity. But when it comes to that, we have to think uh, how to do it, economic, more economically friendly, environmentally friendly, uh, ecologically uh, uh, responsible uh, in how we do it. And that needs, and that is what I said at the beginning, a clear uh, analysis on uh, which impact, which footprint uh, do our actions have. Okay, um, Simone, please, one last comment. Yes, and um, Culture Action also chatted on uh, the Facebook live event about um, their campaign. Um, so we will also put the link there. Um, it's for a higher budget for the Creative Europe program. And I, as European Music Council, I had to take up pick up that uh, chat of course because we also support this one and um, you will find the link in the chat in the facebook chat okay i would like to invite all of you our four distinguished guests on the panel to give us one last message before we have to close our vivid debate and uh, we start with muhammad please one message what you what would you like to see in the upcoming month You have to put on your mic. Muhammad, can you have to put on your mic? Is it possible? Yeah, Is no. Okay. 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 One message. What do you like to see? What should happen now? 
let's let's know that's you know the difference between me and you that you can say everything you can do everything in this day i cannot move from my house i cannot exit and protest okay so please and please demand for us demand for freedom here then we can you know keep chasing and chasing and we can help the villagers here who's dying who are dying because of cancers all the, the, the this villagers neighboring the oil factory which is the the, the main revenue for this state we don't come first uh, in in, uh, in uh, pollutions only we come first also on poverty also we, we are uh, uh, and and you know the the pipeline is uh, it is just neighboring us neighboring my house but we didn't get anything so please do something for here because we can't do anything you are completely right thank you muhammad okay we continue with darius my statement is that uh, we musicians should be more or get more knowledge of the socio-ecological complexity and global local environmental interconnectedness and be an inspiring change makers Thank you, wonderful. Maria? You have to put on the mic as well. On my side, if we don't want to miss our chance to have a more inclusive, resilient, environmental friendly society and economy, one sentence, strong support for cultural and creative sectors. Thank you, and Sabine? Culture and uh, the uh, creativity in music is what makes us human, what's important for our society. And that's the reason why uh, we have to support, uh, especially also the music and the creative sector, because it brings harmony to our life and it brings us also into harmony with our environment. And that's the need for a strong support for culture and environment. Thank you very much. I think it was really a great debate, very vivid and encouraging. And I would really like to add what Mohammed said, we always have to combine the demand for freedom and human rights with all these uh, demands for cultural diversity and transition. Uh, in the societies with the rule of law, we have quite good conditions, but we know globally it's very different. And when we see what is going on in the States at the moment and with our own um, problems with structural racism, we have a lot to do. And therefore, it's not only one dimensional, our task with a Creative Europe program. But I think it was a very clear message that we have to combine the big questions of transition with a higher budget and re being really empathetic with all the artists now um, uh, who live with the corona crisis. And it's not easy for them. And therefore, we consider ourselves to be at the side of artists and to make their lives better. Now I will give you some um, announcements at the end of our debate that you know what, where you can find it. The recording of this panel discussion will be available online at the European Music Council YouTube channel afterwards. If you have any further questions, please get in touch with the EMC. The European Music Council team will put online the contact details in the Facebook chat. And following this interesting panel, we would like to point at some more events in the very near future. Firstly, directly afterwards, please stay tuned to another Facebook Live event following the IMC Rizali Art Debate. You can hear Remy Assam, rockstar, human rights defender, and an important voice in the Egyptian revolution in conversation on the Balaha case link in the Facebook chat starting at 1 p.m., so very soon. And in the frame of the pastoral day, today at 6 p.m., there is a live stream event from the Beethoven House in Bonn on Stand with Arts and Nature at pastoralproject.org. And the last, please follow the EFM online series. The next event will be a workshop on music and sustainability on 18th June from 2 to 5 p.m. I thank you all. I think it was really encouraging. I wish you a good day on this International Environmental Day and hope to see you soon and let's fight together for cultural diversity and freedom. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.